Bhagavad Gita, verse 4.6 Although my form is unborn and indestructible, and although I am the Lord of all living entities, still I appear through my Yogamaya potency in my original form of eternity, cognizance and bliss. Sar Ardhavashini Sri Bhagavan is explaining the tattva or reality of his birth. Although I am unborn, I manifest in various species, such as demigods, humans and animals. One may ask, what is so wonderful about this? In reality, the jiva is also unborn and when his gross body is destroyed, he also accepts another birth. In response, Sri Bhagavan says, Avya Yatma, my body is imperishable, whereas the body of the jiva is perishable. Moreover, the unborn nature of the jiva is of a different type. His birth is due to his bodily identification, which has arisen out of ignorance. As the supreme controller, I am non-different from my body and consequently my quality of being, both born and unborn, is perfectly natural. Such a nature, which is impossible to find elsewhere, is wonderful and beyond the scope of logic and reason. Therefore, it is not possible to compare my birth to that of the jiva, who has taken birth in high and low species as a result of his piety and sin. To clarify this further, Bhagavan Sri Krishna says, Even though I am the supreme controller of the jivas, which means that I am free from the control of karma, still I accept birth. The following doubt may be raised. The jiva also takes bodies in various species, such as demigods, humans and animals, as a result of the activities of his subtle body and these cause his bondage. You, the Supreme Lord, do not have a subtle body. You are all-pervading and the controller of all principles, including time, kala and action, karma. It is said in the Shrutis that you desired to become many. Bahu Shyam. I can become many. According to this statement, you are everything and the entire universe. However, you specifically express Evambuto pi aham sambhavami. Although I appear to be everything in the universe, still I personally manifest myself. From this it is understood that you take birth only to manifest your eternal form, which is categorically distinct from the whole universe. This being the case, one may inquire, what is the nature of these bodies of yours? In response to this, Sri Bhagavan says in the second half of this verse, Prakritim Swam Adishtaya Sambhavami Atma Mayaya I appear through my Yogamaya potency in my original form of eternity, cognizance and bliss. If the word Prakriti is taken to indicate the external deluding potency or Maya Shakti, the meaning here becomes Parameshwara, the presiding controller of material nature, becomes the universe with the help of this potency. However, this does not describe the specific nature of Sri Bhagavan. In the Sanskrit dictionary it is said, Sam Siddhi Praktish Tvi Ime Svarupam Ja Svabhavascha Svarupa, constitutional form, and Svabhava, intrinsic nature, are synonyms for Samsidhi, perfection, and 
prakriti. For this reason, the word prakriti mentioned in this verse indicates Swarupa. The nature of this form of Bhagavan is eternal, full of knowledge and all blissful. Sat Chit Ananda. Srila Sridaswami says, Your Swarupa is not composed of the deluding potency, but is transcendental and composed of Sajit Ananda. Therefore, your Prakriti, or constitutional form, is the embodiment of Shuddha Sattva, pure transcendental goodness. According to Sri Ramanuj Ajarya, Prakriti means nature or Svabhav. Remaining situated in your Svabhav, that is, fully retaining your divinity, you manifest your own form by your independent will only. If we accept Prakriti to mean nature or Svabhava, then the use of these qualifying adjectives Sat, Jit, Ananda, Gana, concentrated eternity, knowledge and bliss, and Eka, Rasa, uniformly composed of one substance, distinguish Sri Bhagavan's form from Maya. Svam means one's own form. It is said in the Shrutis, Sa Bhagavataha Kasmin Pratishtitaha Sva Mahimni. Sri Bhagavan is situated in full possession of all his divine glory. According to Sri Madhusudan Saraswati, when Bhagavan appears, he still remains situated in his Swarupa Shakti. He behaves like an embodied living entity, although there is no difference between his body and his actual self. One may raise the question, since you are eternal when you accept indestructible forms such as Matsya and Kurma, are your past and present forms also simultaneously perceptible? In response, Bhagavan says, Atma Mayaya. This act is performed by my internal potency or Yoga Maya. My Swarupa is both concealed and manifested by this internal potency which is the special function of my knowledge potency or Chit Shakti. I appear only with the help of this Yoga Maya, who is manifesting my present Svarupa and who is concealing my previous forms. Srila Srita Swami writes in his commentary, I appear only by my internal potency, known as Yoga Maya, or Atma Maya, the potency of complete and infallible knowledge, strength, prowess, and so on. Sri Ramanuj Acharya writes in his commentary, Sri Bhagavan appears through his own knowledge potency, Atma Maya, Maya Vayunam Jnanam. In this context, the word Maya is a synonym for knowledge. This is also confirmed by the Sanskrit dictionary. Sri Bhagavan knows the pious and impious actions of the eternal living entities only with the help of this potency. According to Madhusudana Saraswati, it is simply due to illusion that one applies the conception of the body and the embodied to me, Bhagavan Vasudeva for I am transcendental to all such duality. Sar Ardhavarshini Prakajikariti The Kurma Purana states, Deha Dehi Vibhagascha Nishvare Vidyate Kvachit In regard to Sri Bhagavan, there is no distinction between the body and the embodied. In regard to the living entity, however, the body is different from the embodied soul. 
In other words, his gross and subtle bodies are different from him, the Jeev Atma. This is further clarified in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila 17.132. Deha Dehira Nama Namira Krishne Nahi Veda Jivara Dharma Nama Deha Swarupe Viveda. In regard to Krishna, there is no distinction between his name, Nama, and the possessor of the name, Nami, nor between his body, Deha, and the embodied, Dehi. The embodied living entity's nature, name, and body, however, are different from his eternal spiritual constitution. Bhagavan is unborn, Agya. By his own will, he accepts the shelter of his internal potency, or Chit Shakti, in the form of Yogamaya, and by manifesting his eternal body in this material world, he performs simple and natural pastimes as though an ordinary boy. That said, his body consisting of eternality, cognizance, and bliss is not covered by a gross or subtle body. The atomic living entity, on the other hand, being overpowered by the influence of Bhagavan's deluding potency, accepts a subtle and gross body according to the impressions created by his previous actions, and in this way he again takes birth. In conclusion, Srila Bhaktivinod Thakur has commented that Krishna is explaining to Arjuna, although you and I appear in this world again and again, there is a specific difference between your descent and mine. I am Ishvara, the controller of all living entities. I am without birth, and my form is immutable. I appear through the agency of my own knowledge potency, the Chit Shakti. Whereas the Chivas take birth in this world under the influence of my deluding potency, which deprives them of the memory of their past lives. Chivas have to accept a subtle body as a result of their previous actions. And as a result of taking shelter of the subtle body, they have to repeatedly take birth. My appearance, however, in demigod, animal and other forms occurs solely by my own will. Unlike the Chivas, my supremely pure conscious body is not covered by a subtle and gross body. In this mundane plane, I manifest that very same eternal body that exists naturally in the spiritual realm of Vaikuntha. Someone may inquire, how is it possible for the transcendental personality to manifest in the material world along with his realm? Now hear my response. My Yogamaya Shakti is inconceivable and consequently beyond comprehension. No amount of reasoning, however clever, will allow one to understand and measure the activities of Yogamaya. It is your duty to at least understand my intuitive knowledge that I, Bhagavan, endowed as I am with inconceivable potency, am not bound by any rules governing the mundane plane. By my mere will, all the entities of Vaikuntha can easily manifest their supremely pure forms in this material world. In other words, I can transform the complete material phenomenal manifestation into spiritual existence. My all spiritual form, which is beyond all material laws, is completely pure 
even when it manifests in the material world. What doubt can there be about this? That Maya, which controls the Jiva, is also my energy. But understand that when I use the phrase my energy or Prakriti, it only refers to the spiritual potency or Chit Shakti. Although my potency is one without a second, in my presence that potency is the spiritual potency. And for the jivas bound by karma, it appears as the deluding maya potency. This potency, endowed with its respective influences and various types of majestic mystic powers, forces them to rotate in the cycle of birth and death.